All right, guys, so we talked about how Lightroom is not a, a replacement for Photoshop, how you're still going to need to take in some images into Photoshop to be able to do the more advanced editing to those images to really finish them up. But how do you do that exactly? Well, this video we're going to kind of talk about all the details as far as editing images in Photoshop. We're not going to get into how to do it in Photoshop because that's not a part of this series, but just how to get those images into Photoshop and how to manage the files afterwards. So let's get started. Now the easiest way to take images into Photoshop is simply to right click on your image, click edit in, and under edit in it's going to give you a list of the external editors that you've set up. Now how do you set up your external editors? Well, you go into your edit preferences and you set them up under external editing under this tab. Now in the previous tutorial when we set up Lightroom we went over these preferences and we talked about specifically about external editing and how to set that up. So if you guys have any questions on that, go check out that tutorial. But that's how you get there. So you're going to right click, edit in, it's going to show you whatever external editors you set up, including Photoshop CS5, as well as other applications. Now we haven't set up other applications, so that's not going to appear there. But I'm going to click edit in a Photoshop CS5, and automatically Lightroom is going to prepare the file for editing, as you see in the top left. It'll automatically open Photoshop, create a duplicate of the file, and then what we have here, we have it loaded into Photoshop. We can make our changes. I'm going to hit save and close it. And now we see in Lightroom that we have the original right here. And then we have the edited Photoshop file right here. Now we didn't make any changes to the Photoshop file, so obviously it doesn't show up. But if I mouse over, you can see how it says edit.psd. And you can also see the file name at the bottom where it says edit.psd in the uh, right at the top of the film strip. Okay, so what happens if I try to edit a PSD file? So if I right click and go to edit in, and I go to edit in Photoshop, it's going to give me a list of options. Now it gives me an option to edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments, it gives me an option to edit a copy, and it gives me a copy of the edited original. Now under these it'll show you the, kind of the details of these, but let me go over those real quick. If I click edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments, well it's going to open up this file with any Lightroom adjustments made to it. So if I click on the develop module, let's say I just add some brightness to this image. So I'm actually brightening the Photoshop file, not the original RAW file, which is right next to it. Now if I click edit in, edit in Photoshop, well it's going to open up this brightened file. So let's see what it does. So we get into Photoshop and there's the brightened file. So if I compare this, it's created a duplicate of this brightened file and that's what we're editing. Now if I close that, and if I click back on this original edit, edit PSD file, and you can tell which one's the original because it's going to keep adding dash edit onto each one. So this one should be dash edit dash edit. So if you look at the bottom under the file menu, you also see 001 dash edit dash edit. So that's the second edit. If I click right here on the first edit and I click go to edit in, and I click Photoshop again, and this time I hit edit a copy, well this time it's going to create a copy of this PSD file, but it's going to leave it under the, the, the default brightness. It's not going to keep those Lightroom adjustments. So when I click on that one, you're going to see that it's not as bright. So there is the default uh, Photoshop file. Now when I close that and I go back to Lightroom, well you're going to see that those adjustments in Lightroom were still kept on that file. So to reset it back to the original PSD, I just hit reset on that file. Now the last option, which is if I go back to my original Photoshop file, so make sure it's just edit.psd, not edit.edit.edit, .edit or however many edits there are. If I click Edit in Photoshop CS5 and I click Edit Original, well this is now going to let me edit that original PSD file. It's not going to create a duplicate. So whatever I do here, like let's say I black and white it. So I'm just going to go up into my black and whites and I'm going to do just one of these black and white sets that we have, one of these presets. Okay, I'm going to save that out, close it. Now we see that that change was made to the original PSD file that was created from the RAW. Not any of these edits. It didn't create a duplicate. We still have that original PSD file. Okay, so that's editing a Photoshop file. Now let's go back to the original RAW and go over some other details that we have. If I go back to Edit In, I can also open this item as a smart object inside of Photoshop. Now, if you're a fan of smart objects, then I would definitely use this. Um, I don't frequently use this in my workflow much, but uh, it, I, I can see that it can be really useful if you're making changes to these files outside of somewhere and you want them to be automatically updated inside of Photoshop, then yeah, use them as smart objects. But keep in mind that a lot of actions and a lot of uh, filters and things that you run have to flatten smart objects anyway, so they're going to become regular layers inside of that file anyway. So I'm going to close this out. I'm not going to save it. Notice that because I didn't save it, it didn't create a, uh, a duplicate file because it's basing it on the smart object, 
not on is not creating a duplicate of that CR2 in a new PSD. All right, now I'm going to right click. I'm going to actually select a few photos so I have a few more options available. So I'm going to right click, hit edit in. And now see if I don't if I don't select multiple pictures here, if I just select one image, it actually isn't going to give me these next set of options because these next set of options actually require multiple pictures. So these three right here aren't going to be available. But if I select multiple, obviously it's not going to work with these three images, but at least we can see that those options are available. One is to merge as a panorama. And this will basically take, if you have, if you create a panorama uh, set of images and there's six images or however many images in your panorama, you can select all six and it'll automatically open up Photoshop and merge those to your panorama. You can also open as layers, which is a really, really useful feature. So if I wanted to be able to create maybe a composite of multiple image, I would select those images, hit open as layers, and check this out. It's going to, oh, it says we need to update the camera raw. I'm just going to say open anyway. But check it out. It's going to put all these images onto their own layers. And it, it, it just makes it much, much easier. I don't need to go and worry about creating duplicate files and, and copying the layers over. It's going to take care of everything for me. So you can see it opens up each file, copies that file over to that original, and now I have one file with all three layers available. So it's a really cool function just for quickly getting images into Photoshop. And you'll notice that when I closed it out because I didn't save it, it didn't make duplicates, which is great. It opened up as layer. If I save that, that file, then it'll, then it'll automatically include it in Lightroom. If I don't, it's not going to keep it there. So it's, it's a great saver on space. Alright guys, so as you can see, it's pretty easy to take files into Photoshop directly from Lightroom. Lightroom does a great job of managing those files once they're created and saved out. Um, I've actually removed these the PSD files by right-clicking on them and deleting them because we're not going to need them going on and through the rest of the tutorial series because we're going to be using uh, well, Lightroom develop modules to do all the developing. So you guys can get rid of those by right-clicking and deleting and move on to the next uh, chapter.